All right, how's it going, y'all? All right, so I've actually got something pretty fun right here, and that is the Seed Mini Router, which is pretty much a Raspberry Pi compute module, so a Raspberry Pi 4, just in a different form factor, with two gigabit Ethernet ports on it. And so what this is really set up to do is it's set up to be a small package, fully built, that you can deploy as your make-your-own router while having total control over everything. And so I think this is really cool, and even more, I think it's a great use case for these Raspberry Pi 4 compute modules. All right, so for those of you who don't know, I'll give you a quick overview of what a Raspberry Pi compute module is. Is a Raspberry Pi compute module is essentially the Raspberry Pi actual compute powerhouse, so the CPU and everything integrated in, all designed on a special chip that you can basically build your own breakouts for. So instead of having all the different ports like the USB and everything coming out of it, it is all just pins. It is designed to be set up to go into another carrier board to run everything on. And so that's what they've done here. And so by doing that, you can have some really cleanly built packages that are actually pretty cool. So I'm excited to test this thing out and we're gonna go ahead and do it. So this thing's about um, 150 bucks, which is not cheap, but it does come with a compute module, which is a fair amount of money. And as a fully built package, actually looks pretty nice. And so it's actually got the full on compute module right here. As you can see, it is tiny while also looking really good. This is an aluminum heat sink, I believe, that actually lets the thing run just completely silent. And then we also got a box of cables right here. So in here, we've just got regular EU power supplies and things, so you, you can change what country you want to plug this into, and just a power supply. All right, and so really that's all there is in the box. It's just power and the actual device itself. All right, so now I'm just gonna go ahead and take this thing apart. All right, so I have returned now with a screwdriver. There are four tiny screws at the bottom here. We're just gonna go ahead and open those up. And at the bottom here, there's actually a mounting plate. So if you wanted to, you could pretty much mount this however you wanted to. So if you want to mount on the wall or something, and there's these tiny little threads down there too, which looks like you could build your own plate for it, but I, it's not a quarter inch or anything or any standard like tripod mount, which I kind of wish I had done, but probably overkill. Who's going to use this on a tripod mount? All right. And so now we're just going to go ahead and take it off. It's actually a beautiful case down here. And right here, we appear to have the carrier board. So I'm just going to knock this thing out and try not to break it. All right, comes off a little bit. And down there, you can see that's a huge chunk of aluminum. That is a great heat spreader. And right here, we've actually got the carrier board. So there's actually three layers to this thing. So we've got a just baseboard right here that does not appear to have any electrical connectors whatsoever. So it's just the structural integrity of this board. It's still painting it green for whatever. And then right here, we actually have what's called the carrier board. So this is what the compute module actually is plugging into, and it is a custom board. And so as you can see, it's got HDMI out, fans, and also some other USB pins. And so you could customize this further. What's really nice is it's got the two Ethernet ports right here, which is really the selling point of it, and two USB 3.0 ports. It also has a USB 2.0 port right here that is USB-C. That's going to be your power in generally, but you could also set it up for data, which I have seen before. All right, and so this thing is ultra compact, and even better, it's fanless. So what this is really set up for is a learn your own router. So I can see this thing being awesome, awesome, awesome site-to-site -site VPN router. So say, for example, you've got a Synology. This is my immediate use case for this thing. Say you've got a Synology that you want to be able to set up as an off-site backup. So it might not necessarily be perfect at connecting to a VPN server. I've had issues with the past with Synologies and other things where they just don't want to stay on the VPN sometimes and you can run into some issues there. What this thing would be an awesome is a site-to-site VPN connection. So you bring this along with your Synology and you plug one of these into the router at wherever you're setting it up and one of these into the Synology. Then you're able to set this up as a site-to-site -site VPN and so it will create a VPN for that Synology to connect to. 
And so that way you'll be able to control it completely securely. And these things tend to be kind of bulletproof. So they should stick to the VPN really well. And so that way, if there's an issue, you can reboot the Synology and it'll come back up and you won't have all these weird issues. And so that's one awesome use case. Another one is really a router that you can set up in your home lab. This thing, while it's 150 bucks, is actually really cheap compared to anything else you could buy. So there are not a lot of completely customizable routers that you can set up whatever you want on them that are under 150 bucks. And so this is a great one because it's also Raspberry Pi. So you can start customizing it and you can set up it however you'd like to. So one of the things I did want to mention before I put it on here is it's actually also got its own internal storage. So you actually don't even need to put an SD card in here, which is awesome. All right, well now I'm gonna go ahead and put it back on and we're gonna go ahead and boot her up. All right, and so honestly, setup is insanely easy, I just found out. So this was the first time I took it out of the box and messed with thing. You just plug in a ethernet cable into your router, into the port that's closest to the power plug, and it really just acts as an open WRT router. It is so easy to get it set up and running. It's awesome. So right here, we've got the actual setup right here, and you can see you've got a ton of options here. You even like run Docker containers on this thing. So it's really set up to be a super easy to customize board that lets you just run so much stuff. It's got an easy way to set up your own VPN here, and it also can just go through your network. So right now, we'll look at the interfaces. It's already pre-configured with both a VPN and a Docker setup, as well as your regular LAN and WAN. So LAN, obviously, is the local area network port, and WAN is actually what we're plugged into. And so you can actually see that uh, LAN is actually not ETH1 or ETH2. It's actually because on this device, and on the Raspberry Pi compute module, there's only one ethernet out port. So instead what this does, which is really easy, is it's actually got an inbuilt USB 3 to gigabit ethernet adapter in there. And so that's why it's actually not ETH2. And so that's why it's a little bit different, but we can go ahead and check the performance on this thing. Overall, there's a ton of stuff you can do with this. It's a Raspberry Pi running at OpenWRT. And I didn't even have to put an SD card. It's all pre-built onto this thing, which makes it really easy to go ahead and get set up and running on it. I'm actually really impressed, and there's a lot of stuff I'm gonna wanna do here. But really, I think this thing could be a great tool for just about anybody. All right, and so now, let's go ahead and see actually how fast this thing is. So I'm gonna be running an iPerf3 test, and we're gonna go ahead and see how fast it is. So let's go, just go ahead and do that really quick. All right, and so what we're just gonna do really quick is we're gonna run a basic iPerf3 test. It's just set up to really measure maximum throughput here. And so this is me connected directly into my router. I'm not yet going through the Raspberry Pi. So we're just gonna go ahead and run this. It's running on my FreeNAS server, and we're on a one gigabit connection, so that's what we're limited to. And as you can see, as expected, we're getting right around one gigabit per second, which is what we'd like. This is pretty much an optimized one, really seeing how fast the total throughput could be, not necessarily how fast it is in terms of tiny packets. All right, and so as you can see, pretty much no latency whatsoever here. I did have a few lost packets, which is interesting, but we got a very fast transfer. And so now let's go ahead and do the exact same thing, but instead of being connected directly to my router, I'm gonna be connected directly to the actual device. And so by default out of the box, it's gonna be set up to be a DHCP server. So really acting just like a router, it's gonna do all of the router things that you expect it to, just default out of the box. So you can go ahead and get started and then you can start customizing it however you'd like to. And so honestly, I've not configured a single thing here at all. It's just all automatic. We go ahead and see we should get connected. I'm now connected and I am on the 192.168. That's the default out of the box what it's giving me. And so now let's go ahead and run the exact same test again. So this is actually very impressive. It is able to be a full gigabit of a router. So legitimately, this is fast. This is honestly very, very, very fast. And I'm very impressed by this. It is having no trouble whatsoever going through the networks. And so, yeah, we did get a little bit slower, very slightly slower, but overall, we pretty much are able to handle a full gigabit connection running on a little Raspberry Pi 4. 
Now, I'm gonna run this a couple of times as I'm talking here, just to see if the thing heats up. And you can definitely feel the top of that heat sink is getting a little warm, but it's a huge chunk of aluminum. So we're just gonna run it for a little while, just over and over and over again, and see if we start to see it slowing down. But honestly, I've been really impressed by this thing. I actually really like it, and I think there's a lot you can do with it. I think it's also a really great way to really learn how routers work. So it's a simple thing where you can just keep going through and setting this up and playing with it however you'd like to, and you'll learn so much from it because it's also destructible. If you need to, you just reinstall everything and go from there, which is always something I like to see. Out of the box, it's got pretty much everything you need, and it was honestly very like consumer kind of feel to it. This feels like a router you would get just out of the box, except it's so much more customizable and honestly incredibly powerful. A lot of cheap routers cannot handle a one gigabit straight throughput connection. And especially being in such a small package like this, I think there's a lot of stuff you can do with it. I'm really excited to try out other stuff with it because it is still two gigabit connections on there that you can start messing around with multi-routing, inter-VLAN routing, and things like that that were previously kind of limited by the single gig connection on a Raspberry Pi. And yeah, I mean, I've kept running this thing and I've really not seen the thing slow down. I think this is honestly a very powerful device and I think it's gonna be able to handle pretty much anything you're gonna be able to throw at it. And I'm honestly quite impressed. It does make sense because it is running on a Raspberry Pi 4 pretty much. So you've got so much power underneath there. And even better, it's fanless. All right, well that's gonna be it for this overview. Go and leave any other tutorials you'd like to see me make in the comments below and have a good one. Bye.